some bananas. B A N A N A S. Oh, hello there. Hear the music. Better prepare to get laced because they're gonna taste my bread. I got that too. Who doesn't like giant kaijus beating each other up? I know I do for sure. What's up everybody? It's Ryzilla here today. I'm going to bring you my top 10 favorite kaiju thus far. Now, I must clarify that we st at this point still have not gotten a Godzilla vs. Kong trailer even though it's technically killing us all inside and that's this uh, virus that's going around. Uh, but yeah, so a few rules is the kaiju cannot be some kind of just giant animal. It can't be an animal that was normal that got genetically altered. No. Unfortunately, I cannot include Godzilla on this list simply because he will probably wipe out pretty much 90% of his contendants, and uh, and he will always be my kaiju hands down, no matter what. It's just good giving, guys. I'm sorry, but yeah. With that being said, let's just get right into the video and let's get on with the list. Shut up, clock in, and load up. Number ten, Trespasser. When Circle Room opened, they knew they had to have some kind of kaiju that would stand out amongst the other, such, the other popular franchises such as Gamera or Godzilla. And Trespasser was a great example. The point a large axe-shaped crest from his head and a large one protruding from his back he get, is where he gets his second name, Axe Head. He disports two fused arms, supporting three digit claws. He doesn't really do much in the, game, in the film other than just use his brute strength to destroy Golden Gate Bridge. It takes I believe six days and three tactical news to finally bring him down in the video game though He seems much bulkier and actually has a somewhat de devastating fire or some kind of plasma breath But overall, I'm not gonna lie. There's not really much going for this guy other than he looks cool and he's just awesome period So with this guy all the way We're just gonna go and ignore the fact that he kills some dude that flew into his tail <laughs> But he is the first kaiju, and we have to give that credit because he is the one that basically gave us a unique kaiju that we see in Pacific Rim and the awesome Jaegers are in it. Let's go with number nine, guys. Raiju. I'm fast as fuck, boy. It should come as no surprise that this guy will be eventually somewhere on this list. Having a unique look and actually looking the most, I would call it normal ammo like in terms of the other kaiju. Now, seeming more water-based than some of the other kaiju we've seen, using his powerful and long and tail to swim extremely like a crocodile, and with his outer jaw, you'd call it, surrounding his relatively soft like head, you could say, along with his powerful jaws. His tail isn't also used for swimming. It could possibly, it seems to be an, a devastating weapon if used correctly. Now, Honestly, I'm not gonna lie, this guy was actually an absolute genius when it came to kaiju that would look like that actually could be from Earth. Now, with this being said though, he's not one that like would stand out in terms of skill-wise. I mean, Gypsy Danger was able to kill him after he tried to do the same move twice, which doesn't work in Pacific Rim, apparently. But nonetheless, he gets number 9 simply because he's based off crocodiles, which are actually some of my favorite creatures on the world, simply because they are literally living dinosaurs. And taking a cue from that of having creatures that have been around since the dinosaurs have been waiting this entire time would make an awesome addition to the kaiju fan base, you could say. And he is liked by many others, including myself. Uh, duh. And yeah, let's move on. Number 8. Haikuja. Now, I'll be honest, guys. I was kind of torn between putting Haikuja or Raijin on this list. Because Raijin alone is actually a really unique looking kaiju. Not even just by movie franchise standards, but by kaiju standards in general with his unique faceplate design. But I had to rank him above it simply because, despite me having a, despite me liking Raijin a lot, Haikuja just stands out in my opinion. He actually seemed like he would have been one of more standout kaijus of the rest in terms of his actual like physique alone. But he is a he's a category four kaiju despite him being actually one of the smallest kaiju in the entire Pacific Rim franchise. He's not really good at anything to be honest. If there was anything I had to give this guy credit for, it's his unique ability to burrow under stuff. Which, if you're a kaiju in a large crowded city where you're constantly struggling to move, is pro is a really unique ability and actually will probably make him one of the fastest kaiju in terms of his traversal ability. Also, he seems to be the most durable. He's one of the armor types of kaiju, as I said earlier. But what that also means said though, in terms of actual like fighting, he's not really that good. Probably because he's ganged up on all the time and has to run away like a little. But to be honest, he's pretty good. Not gonna lie. Uh, he is his primary fighting style seems to be ambush, 
which is demonstrated in the film, but he doesn't really succeed it. He's flanked in pretty much every position, and I mean, let's be honest, all the Kaijin and Berserk Rim uh, Uprising just get wrecked. Number seven, Gigan. All right, now that we got these one-track ponies out of the way, let's talk about some classic kaiju. Kaiju is one of the most original kaiju in, well, kaiju history, pretty much. He's usually depicted as some type of ancient di cybernetic dinosaur controlled by aliens. In pretty much all his fashion, he kind of is. Occasionally, he teamed up with King Ghidorah to fight Godzilla in the famous battle with him and Angiris. Gigan is more sadistic and more of a, in my opinion, terrifying kaiju to ever come across than most others. Kaiju are awesome, but Gigan's more like a freaking Terminator kaiju, guys. I'm gonna be honest. With a very intimidating and terrifying center saw blade down his uh, chest and stomach region that can work and slice kaiju to pieces, he is just covered in spikes. Whoever designed this guy needs to be closely monitored because you don't know what this guy might have in his house. But yeah, with that being said, though, Gigan has a laser that's protruding from his uh, visor and has epic has epic looking fins from his back it's not really explained how that being said though back then really didn't matter Godzilla could fly back then he could do epic gravity fine drop kicks Gigan could fly at supersonic speeds he does seem to have like insane amount of control in terms of slowing down his speed which is why in the old school movies he actually had parachutes i know kind of weird but we'll deal with it Gigan is also one of the only kaiju in my opinion to actually have the most transformations while still betraying the original look. Godzilla obviously will win no matter what hands down. Ghidorah may be slightly behind but Gigan is the only kaiju I've seen where he actually will get physically injured and show up in the same movie with uh, slight modifications such as Gigan 2.0 in Final Wars which was hyped the hell up for obvious reasons it's Gigan what's wrong with you and also when we eventually dies from Godzilla because you know you can't mess with the king he comes back and honestly you can't get more bro he comes back with two chainsaws on his arms instead of his sickles there's honestly nothing more epic than that that being said though he does die in the movie because he was too stupid to try striking a power engine pose and watch where his rotating blades were coming back towards him number six rodan <laughs> Rodan should need really no introduction here. He's one of the most famous monsters in the entire Godzilla franchise and one of the famous Japanese monsters in general. He's one of, in my opinion, one of the most tragic story kaiju, but he's still a very powerful and dangerous combatant, considering he, in my opinion, is one of the best flyers in kaiju history simply due to his pterodactyl like nature. And he's often considered one of, you could say, Back and forth, he's never really the main focus in any Godzilla media other than his solo movie back in the day. But to be honest, he deserves some credit. He's definitely one of my favorites, especially with the Monster vs. Inter 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 interpretation of him. He's a very dangerous foe, appearing to have a very reminiscent and very powerful gust of wind that he just has just from spearing. Fl spearing? Wow. Just from flying. He's able to create decimating and powerful sonic booms with just clapping his wings together. He's had fire breath. He's never really used it that much in media. Usually flies around, pokes at, pokes, lol, pecks at people, and he's just a very dangerous foe in general. His main, I'd say, terrifying aspect in the MonsterVerse is his sadistic not really sadistic but more treacherous personality in terms of where his loyalties really lie he pretty much when the monsterverse movie came out everyone just said well he's basically kaiju starscream which i'm not gonna lie that's exactly what i was thinking up to he can fly at speeds of mach 2 we don't really know what his top speed is but we can assume it's probably mach 2 maybe mach 3 if he really has to book it that being said though he is one of in my opinion the coolest of the monster versus kaiju and is actually my other than Godzilla, my favorite redesign of the famous movie monsters. And in my opinion, he's actually one of the monsters I actually want to see make a return in hopefully Godzilla vs. Kong. Originally in the Monster Rush, Rodan was going to have feathers, but it was scrapped possibly due to Peel's original Rodan fans. 
which I'm not gonna lie, even though feathers would have been interesting, I do like that Rodan doesn't have them. Especially since it seems since he's based off pterosaurs, which did not have feathers. Alright. Dinosaurs had feathers, pterosaurs did not have feathers. Let's just end that debate right there. A wing at least on the wings. But yes, Rodan didn't have feathers, and I'm not gonna lie, I personally prefer it just because it makes him more dinosaur-like and frankly just makes it probably cheaper for them to incorporate just plain wings instead of adding feathers to them in terms of his unique well more like a staple for him Rodan emerges from a volcano in pretty much every movie or is pretty much has some kind of connection with volcanoes which is a core part of his character and is nothing short of just well awesome number five monster x after Gigan fails to kill Godzilla in his first attempt and his second attempt killing himself technically in the process, the Zillions need to know they needed some kind of monster to deal with Godzilla. Fortunately they chose right. Monster X, really aka Kaiser, Kaiser Ghidorah, was sent to deal with Godzilla. Now I'm not gonna lie guys, this guy just screams just epic awesomeness. Like I personally love metal and this guy looks like he will be the perfect like kaiju for a metal band or something. I'm just gonna point that out right now. He's a very formidable opponent. The only the only kaiju in the entire like movie to actually shrug off Godzilla's atomic breath and actually to cause him to feel actual pain. He actually seems to be able to match Godzilla blow for blow, and it seems to be better at combats than the King of Monsters. Unfortunately, when it comes to actual fighting, the, all that kind of goes downhill when he transforms the Kaiser Ghidorah. Not gonna lie, the form is pretty cool. The transformation is epic, but I really don't like it that much to be honest. Unfortunately, Kaiser Ghidorah couldn't really stand up to Godzilla once he gets repowered. Now, I gotta give this guy credit. Monster X probably could have killed Godzilla, but Kaiser Ghidorah really couldn't. But overall, not gonna lie, Kaiser Ghidorah is a pretty cool Ghidorah and is debated as the strongest of all the Ghidorahs. But Monster X, in my opinion, is the better looking form and, in my opinion, the better monster in general. Number four, Mothra. Now, I gotta be honest, guys, I'm gonna say it. I don't support the Godzilla Mothra ship, to be honest with y'all. And for those people, I simply have to say. Now, with that being said, though, in all seriousness, I'm gonna be honest, guys. I don't really support it, but to be honest, I do like some of the like artwork people make. Not like you know, red art, not like adult fan art, but like certain things like this with the uh, Mothra and Godzilla is pretty freaking awesome. I'm not gonna lie, they're freaking just like I said, just awesome in general. Now, a lot of people keep forgetting this because I believe this is you know a lot of people these days are only seen really the monster as many probably a couple other old school movies but Godzilla has killed Mothra on numerous occasions in the old school movies which I feel like everyone's forgetting but that's not the reason why she's on this list the reason why Mothra's on this list is because she's actually a very very powerful combatant and the monstrous version of her seems to be the strongest now I'll be honest guys Mothra I'll be honest before 2019 King of Monsters she was really just a moth that it spewed silk some kind of like spider-man but yeah she would just spew silk and shoot lasers out of her antenna or eyes or whatever and she was really just a giant moth but when the monster Wars came out they knew they had to make her you know stand out they can't just make her look like a moth she would get wrecked she still gets wrecked a little bit i'll be honest but in terms of her actual like appearance and everything it's awesome the way they use different insects as like prey mantises and wasps to make her see to make her have like more fighting capabilities the stinger alone was one, a great like unique feature for mothra that i'm kind of surprised no one really used before that being said though like i said giant moth basically but moths and people always when they think of beauty they think of butterflies if they think of the two but moths alone are actually pretty freaking awesome i'm not gonna lie i even googled some of these to show how like i just said awesome they are and yeah moths are actually pretty awesome in nature Another thing that um, seems to be a stable of moth is that she just dies. <laughs> she dies in every movie. But as long as she lays an egg or whatever, she comes back. So she technically just reincarnates herself every time, which is kind of broken, to be honest. Maybe if you kill the one, the, you destroy the egg or whatever, but you have to find it. That's the first problem. 
But um, yeah, Mothra is on this list simply because she's a super iconic monster, appearing as nearly as many moves as King Ghidorah. She's not nearly as powerful as any of the contenders on this list by like a one-on-one -on -one fight. A couple of them she probably could stand her own against, but in terms of an actual one-on-one -on -one fight, no holds bar cage, mat cage match, she probably could beat a couple. She beat Rodan easily. Well, not easily. She got wrecked, but she beat Rodan. But Mothra is, in my opinion, an amazing looking monster. Like one of the most beautiful monsters in kaiju history. Probably the number one in that regard. So because of her bioluminescence and bi bioluminescence and uh, just how, like, come on, man. It, if there's any creature that's gonna look like it fell from heaven, it's gonna be Mothra. Especially if you like watch any of the trailers where she sprouts her wings out. It just looks like an angel is coming down to save you or something, bro. Like, there's nothing beating that. But yeah, so that's kind of the reason why Mothra's on this list is just because she's so iconic. She's such an awesome character despite her not really been as much action-packed as some of the others. And uh, yeah, that, that's also really I have for Mothra. Now to number three, King Ghidorah. Ghidorah is one of the most iconic monsters in kaiju history. Other than Godzilla, I would argue he's probably the most famous, to be honest with you guys. Now, to be honest guys, I'm not gonna lie, Ghidorah is one of the most unique villains in any kind of media. Despite the him looking, as you would imagine, a good guy, he's normally a villain, and an extraterrestrial villain to include that. He's only been a hero or quote unquote good guy in one iteration and that's really just because Godzilla's role was reversed to where he was actually a straight up villain. The thing I personally love about Ghidorah is the fact that, like I said earlier, he looks exactly like how you imagine a good guy would look, but he's not. Which probably goes with the old saying, don't judge a book by its cover. Godzilla and Ghidorah are basically, they're are basically kaiju version of Batman and Joker. You can't really top these two in terms of rivalry. Ghidorah is hands down Godzilla's most noticeable and possibly one of his fiercest foes yet. He's not the fiercest however, we'll get to that one next next time. But like I said, Ghidorah is in my opinion one of the most terrifying and one of Godzilla's largest combatants ever. And you've probably seen that meme before where that whole we are destined to do this thing forever. And it's true, there's never been an alliance with Godzilla or Ghidorah at any point in the, of their entire run together. I personally love it. It's sort of like Optimus and Megatron thing or like I said earlier Joker and Batman. It's Ghidorah is a truly devastating foe with his gravity beams, which actually have the power to levitate things instead of, you know, just wiping stuff out like Godzilla's atomic breath, for example. It's not entirely clear if his gravity beams in the MonsterVerse can actually levitate things. We do see Godzilla bounce from the gravity beams when he falls to the ground, but we're not entirely sure if he was being levitated or he just bounced like a basketball, basically. Now, at the end of King of Monsters, we do see Ghidorah quote unquote die, but we do see Kevin's sadistic head. The head that is the most curious and one of the most memeiest heads of all the Ghidorah trio. And we don't know what that crazy, insane, sadistic bastard is planning for our heroes yet. We don't know what Kevin has in store for us. All we can do is hope that Godzilla and his awesomeness is enough to fend off this invading foe before Kevin's curiousness kills us all. But with jokes aside, Ghidorah has always been a force to be working with and demands attention in every movie he's in. His other two heads, while Kevin is curious, the center one is the most serious out of the bunch, while the right head is more aggressive and is more inclined to get into the fight. But like I said earlier with him demanding attention, he's actually extremely powerful enough that he usually takes the combined efforts of several fighters to actually beat him or at least make him retreat. Godzilla usually always gets final blood because, well, he's Godzilla and... Well, there's no other else to be said, he's Godzilla. And yeah, because of that, Ghidorah definitely makes the top three in my mind, hands down, with no discussion whatsoever for it. Now, number two, Destroya. Destroya is, hands down, Godzilla's most powerful foe in any kind of media, hands down. Destroya is one of the most terrifying, in my opinion, of all of Godzilla's Rose Gallery. Used by crustaceans and demons, primarily, Destroya stands out immediately, it looks like something that came right out of hell. Destroya has multiple forms and is actually one of many, meaning he actually has multiple, similar to Mothra how there's multiple stages, there's one where he 
just gets bigger and bigger when he combines more with himself. He's a terrifying and, like I said earlier, extremely powerful foe, able to give Burning Godzilla a run for his money, even as far as to actually beat Burning Godzilla if humans do not interfere. Ghidorah is powerful, and I'm not going to disagree on that, but Shoya just overshadows Ghidorah when it comes to the power scale. There's a rumors we might see Destroya in a Monsterverse early, and I'm not gonna lie, that would be freaking awesome. Always usually having four wings and not being as much media as much. Destroya's design hasn't really changed over the years since Godzilla vs. Destroya. Destroya is the only monster that we know of actually that can be that can actually kill Godzilla in any kind of any sort of power boost, and the most powerful version is Burning Godzilla. Unfortunately, this monster isn't just here because of his terrifying looks and awesome powers, but it's primarily due to the fact that he's the monster that caused Godzilla to die. Not due to the fact that he's the sole reason Godzilla is dead, more or less the reason Godzilla, one last kick to the cane you could say, the biggest challenge for Godzilla yet and had to go out with a bang. So honestly, this monster is here just because he pulls on my heartstrings when I see Godzilla slowly dying after he overheats and does a burning form. Not to mention Destroyer nearly killed Junior, which is itself just crazy. I'm very intrigued to see how powerful Burning Godzilla from the MonsterVerse is considering he was able to completely obliterate Ghidorah. So we'll we'll just have to wait and see if if Destroya shows up in the MonsterVerse, how would he fare against Burning Godzilla considering he will destroy Godzilla hands down if they're going to go with the original. And now finally, number 1, the Mega Kaiju. Hey right, guys, I'd be lying if I said the Mega Kaiju probably wasn't the best thing in the entire Pacific Rim franchise in terms of just epicness. Fused by three other Kaiju in a Frankenstein-like manner, so quick that it didn't even get a chance to even die. So all three minds are basically fused into one. Which if you combine, if you basically consider the fact that the Kaiju are, have high minds, it technically wouldn't really matter that much. Having each of the abilities of the other three Kaiju Haikuja, Raijin, and Strythorn. The Mega Kaiju is possibly the most dangerous Kaiju there is in the entire franchise, and it's probably one of the only Kaiju in Pacific Rim that can actually take on one of the Godzilla Rose Gallery monsters, at least in a decent fight. Now, there's no debate. Godzilla will win against the Mega Kaiju, hands down. The Mega Kaiju may have more abilities, but Godzilla's been around a lot longer and weighs a hell of a lot more than the Mega Kaiju does. Now, I won't lie, guys. The Mega Kaiju is awesome at its own right. Its design alone is so bizarre, and but like it's so perfect. Honestly, this was the creature that made me want to see Uprising. Other than that, in a and Fury. The Mei Kaiju seems to have much more brutish tactics. I did mention Haikuja's ambush. Shrythorn seems to be long range while Raijin seems to be close range. The Mei Kaiju is extremely durable compared to its three counterparts and it just destroys all the other Jaegers that come after it with relative ease. It seems like honestly nothing could stop this Kaiju. If it wasn't for a freaking drop from orbit, this thing is dense as hell. Like, I gotta be honest with y'all. Now, the main kaiju is one of the only kaijus I've ever seen alone that actually just will wreck any mech. Granted, this is Sir Grim, so you kind of expect the kaiju to land a few good shots or at least destroy a couple people. But just the size, power, and just the overwhelming strength and arsenal of this thing. Strythorn's ability seems to make its thorns on its tail sharper and easier to penetrate. Ob of objects. We see Raijin's on his chest plates where he will be under fire and he would uh, redirect to connect energy and a ground pound. We don't really know how Haikuja's was considering the, ma the mass of the kaiju. I doubt it could honestly burrow through underground so that ability in my opinion is probably not even useful especially considering it's taller than any of the Jaegers. But the way it like handles its opponents with its new counterparts and fused body is extremely entertaining to say the least. Honestly, you can't get more epic than dying from giant mech hitting you from the atmosphere, which I have to admit was freaking awesome. Newt being a traitor in Uprising was completely and utterly genius. I cannot deny that. You can't deny that either if you've seen the movie. No one expected Newt and the fact that he's the one who technically made the kaijus combine instead of Mei Kaiju is nothing short of just brilliance. The Kaiju group is the one who makes the Kaiju into a giant combination of themselves. And that, my guys, is where I'm going to have to end this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I really hope you did because I'm not going to lie, I kind of did my best here. I really don't have a script or anything like that, so I kind of did this in the moment. This took an embarrassing lot.
a lot of time to edit and stuff. Not because that is partially due to the fact that, well, I don't know, man. Sometimes you have, uh, like, motivation to do some, then next moment you don't have it. And not to mention, there's, uh, like, stuff you, people go through, especially during this quarantine crap. So, not gonna lie, guys, like I said, I really hope you did enjoy this video. Didn't do a script, like I said earlier. There was monsters I definitely did want to add to this, but unfortunately, I couldn't add them. Monsters such as Space Godzilla, Bailante, just name a few. But like I said, I hope you guys really enjoyed it. If you like videos like this, please let me know. This was kind of fun to make, not gonna lie. The only reason it took so long is because it's my first time ever making a video like this. And because of that, like I said, just took a little longer than it normally would if I did a second one. But yeah, with that being said though, hope you're all having a good time. Hope you're all staying safe, washing your hands and all that crap. But yeah, uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. If Actually, let me know down below. What's your favorite kaiju? What's your top 10 favorite kaiju? Or just favorite kaiju in general? Like I said, mine's gonna always be Godzilla, which is why I couldn't include him on the list. Not to mention, other than Ghidorah and Destroya, he would wreck the others, no problem. Uh, comment below, you know, what kind of videos of mine do you actually prefer? Do you prefer hour-long music? Do you prefer gaming? Do you prefer stuff like this? Or do you prefer other stuff, like reaction or something? I don't know. I won't know unless y'all tell me. But yeah, like I said, this is your boy Ratzilla signing out. If you're there, uh, consider liking this video and subscribing and joining Monster Brigade. You all are super awesome. Whoever watched this, just thank you a lot just for watching it, especially all the way to here. And with that being said, I'm out, guys. Later. <laughs>